everyone and welcome back. I've had a lot of requests out there from my uh, subscribers, mainly my airsofters, asking about the Desert Eagle pistols. And you know, it got me thinking, everyone's familiar with the Desert Eagle pistol. You've seen it in the movies and on YouTube where other people are shooting a hand cannon and it flips out of their hand or something crazy. So I was fortunate enough to actually borrow one and take it out and shoot it. I actually had to reload for the, the ammunition for it because this stuff is so expensive. I mean, the, the price range on these on the ammunition for this gun is anywhere from $35 to $45 for a box of $20. It, it's just insane. But anyways, it shoots, a, this one here is the 50 caliber AE or Action Express. And I've done a couple of videos on how to reload this as well. And I'll annotate those here and at the end of this video as well. So if you want to check, uh, check it out on how to reload this, uh, check these videos out. It's a two-part session. But this is the 50 caliber bullet. I mean, that's a huge, crazy bullet. It's a 325 grain hollow point in this case. And just to put it in perspective for you, is that a nine millimeter? No, but it might as well be. That's a 45 ACP. I mean, it this 50 here dwarfs the 45 in comparison. And then just I have a nine millimeter, 147 grain bullet just for kicks there to show you. Now, to be honest with you, I've been shooting this for a while now, so the physical size of this is just not that impressive anymore. <laughs> but every time I pull it out to, for someone to show, the smile on their face and the, the disbelief at the physical size of the bullet is just amazing. And I remember when I first shot this gun, I picked up the magazine. I go, man, that feels like a rifle magazine. Well, dang near is. I mean, here is a 20-round AR mag. And you can see the size is not that quite, not that different. I mean, this this is a large gun here. But anyways, let's go to the gun itself. Like I said, everyone's familiar with it. They've always heard Desert Eagle. Um, most no one has shot one that you know that I know of. Uh, but I have a lot of friends now that do that have shot it. Um, it's a it's a beast of a gun. It's really heavy, and surprisingly, it doesn't recoil that much. It, I think a lot of the shock is taken up, from, a lot of the recoil is taken up from the slide itself, the sheer weight of it. It uses a dual recoil spring system. Um, it's truly gas operated. You know, most of the other automatic pistols that we see and that we own, like the 1911s, Berettas and all that, they're actually blowback. Means the recoil actually drives the, the slide backwards to, to cock it and put another round in the chamber. But this one actually is truly gas operated. So inside the barrel, it's ported, and it actually vents some of the gas from as the explosion and driving the bullet out. It takes some of that gas and redirects it backwards in order to work this slide. Um, take down on it. We'll go ahead and show that real simple. It's very simple. There's a push button on this side, so I'll press that and hold it down. Then over here, you flip this, and the barrel flies right off. Now the cool thing about this, this frame here, you can put a 44 magnum barrel on it or a 50 and this is the 50 barrel but if you wanted to switch out calibers it's fairly easy to do so if, with the press of a button and then you have to switch out the magazines of course so once you get the barrel out you can look right here this is the actual piston I mean and you can think of it as just like a piston in a car you can see the carbon build up on the top right there from the gas coming down and put driving this back and like I said, it's a dual recoil system. And the 50 has two springs on each one of those recoil rods. I believe the 44 and the lower power ones only use a, a one spring. I could be wrong on the 44 as well, but the 357s, I've, I've read that they do use a single spring. But anyways, to take this further apart, flip, this, flip the frame over, slide it off like so. And then we have our frame and then our recoil system right here, my recoil springs. Very surprised to see such tiny little springs in such a big, big gun. Set that aside. And then our piston just comes right out. So it's, it's fairly simple operation. The bolt, the bolt's a little bit more intricate to get out. I don't, for time's sake, I'm not going to show how to do it just because it was a bear to put back together. But essentially you take the firing pin out and the firing pin block just like a 1911 and then the firing pin and the spring comes out and then this little gizmo right here uh, comes out. It's kind of like a, uh, it makes the bolt rotate 
This is actually a rotating locking bolt. So if you're familiar with AR-15 and the operation of it, this is pretty similar to that. And when it closes up, this, this locks into place and it gets a good seal for the chamber. And then on, upon recoil, when it comes back, it turns and unlocks itself and then ejects the brass out to the side. Um, this, this particular gun is sporting a fiber optic rear sight and uh, it's from Dawson Precision. You know I've done some other videos on Dawson Precision equipment and, and replacement parts. This is one of theirs. I've, from what I believe, they don't have the front sight made yet. But if you're looking out there, if you're looking to buy some sights for your Desert Eagle, um, check them first. And if they don't have what you want, call them up or email them and complain. You know, squeaky gear gets the gets the oil. And uh, anyways, aftermarket parts, I won't go into that too much. But, uh, you know, I was real surprised at the simplicity of this. I read a little bit in the instruction manual. I didn't want to take it apart too much. Um, but there's some adjustment in here for the trigger and the over travel so uh, you know you can actually smooth the trigger out but to be honest with you I don't see why you would do that because if you don't have a trigger for Lynch this gun will give you a trigger for Lynch I mean this thing has amazing noise shockwave and fireball I don't I'll try to throw some video footage in here of us shooting it and uh, depending on the frame rate and how my video is rendered, it may or may not uh, disclose the fireball. But you can get a fireball out of this gun in broad daylight and high sun with no clouds, at least three feet beyond the barrel. And you know, I borrowed this from Shred2.net, and he was kind enough to actually loan me one more 50. And this one is from Freedom Arms. It's the model 555 50AE. This is a five-shot cowboy revolver gun. I thought this recoiled a lot. This actually hurts to shoot. Um, it's not pleasant to shoot at all. And <laughs> by the time I shot two shots, my flinch was so bad I couldn't hit a gong at about 20 yards with it. Uh, it's only a five shot revolver, as mentioned, and it's actually true cowboy style. So you have to put it on half cock to rotate it. Check your cylinder. You have an ejection rod here on the bottom and it kicks it out. But uh, single action only, just like the true cowboy stuff. But like I said, if you don't have a trigger flinch, these guns, especially this one, will give you one. So this is not a newbie gun for any, you know, this is not a gun to give someone for the first time and say, here, try this, uh, and they will never shoot again. So just keep that in mind. If you're trying to get your girlfriend or someone to, to get out and shoot some guns with you, don't give them this first off the first out of the box. But to put it back together, We'll take our little gas piston. You notice there's a little odd shape right there where it's milled out. There's a notch in the gas piston. We're going to put it just like so. And then we take our recoil springs and there's a notch in it. You'll see right there. We're going to flip that upside down. It goes in that little goofy spot. And so I like to lay it just like that. And then we'll take our frame upside down and put it in the grooves and then roll it over. Now if you've done it correct, the piston will not come out. It should be tight. If it falls right out or turns and comes right out, you've done something incorrectly. So next, we'll take our barrel and it's got some lugs here in the back and that's going to fit right here in this little opening. So we take that, put it down like so. Now we've got it, just press it, put your hand on the end there and collapse everything and then flip the switch and they're ready to go. The safety on it, you know, one of the guys I was shooting with, he was, where's the safety? I said, well, I don't know, I never used it, I never, uh, don't plan on carrying it, don't plan on using a safety. I'm gonna load it and shoot it. But the safety is not easy to actuate with one hand. It's gonna take some practice and some tough calloused thumbs or fingers. The trigger pull on it is not too bad, but like I said, <laughs> once there's live ammunition in it, it gets kind of freaky and scared. And yeah, I said it. I was scared a little bit to shoot this, but it's fun. It's very fun. Well, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews, and check out these videos here at the end. Thanks for watching. Oh, hell yeah!
Yeah. Give me six more rounds. <laughs> I got you. I got Nate in the. God. Can't take no more. Woo! Take it. I hit him too. I hit you here. Woo! Damn. Now that's a kick. Flinch. <laughs> Daddy, Dad Fink made a big old flinch. Daddy that wouldn't is, do him. <laughs> that is scary. I don't think I hit it. <laughs> no, what did you hit on the triangle target? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> that Daddy, was just... are you done yet? Yes, baby. But whatever that... <laughs> it made a huge fire. <laughs> that was just scary. <laughs>